Hello friends, this video on body fluids and circulation part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this, uh, let us now talk about the next component of blood that is the red blood cells or the erythrocytes or RBCs, whatever you call them. So these are the most abundant cells in the blood. So they are present in huge number. So quantity wise they are huge. So almost 5 million of RBCs are present in 1 microliter of blood. So just imagine 1 microliter that is almost 10 to the power minus 6 liters. So just imagine how much that much quantity of blood will have 5 million RBCs. So just look at their abundance. These are small cells without nucleus so that is an important point to be noted here that these are anucleated cells that is they do not have a nucleus and also if you talk about their shape they are biconcave in shape. Now what do we mean by biconcave shape? Now how can a cell have a biconcave shape? You remember we spoke about the mirrors in our physics uh, like concave mirror, convex mirror, we spoke about lens, concave lens, convex lens. So there we have spoken about a biconcave lens and this is how a biconcave lens looked like. Right? So both the surfaces were concave in nature. So these cells also they have a shape somewhere like this. So if you look at them sideways, you will see that here there is a small dump, again here there is a small hump and that means they give a biconcave shape. They carry oxygen from lungs to different parts of the body. Now these red blood cells are the ones which are red. The, the name itself suggests that they are red in color and their red color is due to the presence of the red pigment called hemoglobin. The hemoglobin helps in carrying oxygen or transport of oxygen. In the last chapter we discussed about the transport of oxygen by hemoglobin. Correct. So that means these red blood cells contain hemoglobin and hemoglobin helps to carry oxygen by formation of oxyhemoglobin. So that way it helps to transport oxygen from lungs to different parts of the body. It contains the respiratory pigment hemoglobin which has affinity for oxygen and that is why they form the compound oxyhemoglobin. Now it has been observed that in a healthy adult there is almost 12 to 16 grams of hemoglobin which is present in every 100 milliliters of blood. So that is quite a good number. So 12 to 16 grams of hemoglobin is present in 100 milliliters of blood. So now the question is where are these red blood cells produced? Now these red blood cells are produced in the bone marrow from stem cells. Now this might be a new term for you. That what is a stem cell? Now the stem cells are the specialized embryonic cells. The, at the very beginning when the embryo formation takes place. So there you have the stem cells and their speciality is that they have the potential to develop into any type of tissue in the body. Now if you talk about the different types of tissues which are present in the body, there are so many different types of cells present in the body, right? For example, if you talk about the nerve cells, that is the neurons, they are so different from, the, from all other cells. Again, you talk about the liver cells, they are also quite different. You talk about the RBCs or the WBCs, even they are different from each other. So that means different cells of the body or the different tissues which are present in the body, they are all different from each other. But the speciality of these embryonic cells is that they have the potential to develop into any type of tissue in the body. So these stem cells produce the red blood cells in the bone marrow. So that is their origin. In fact, the stem cells produce the white blood cells also. Now, since as I said, quantity wise, uh, the RBCs are like abundant. There are a lot of RBCs present in our body. But if you talk about their size, they are very small in size, and this small size enables them to travel in extremely thin capillaries. So, when we will talk about the process of circulation, and then you will see that there are very thin tube like structures present inside our body through which the blood flows. So they are, these red blood cells are able to flow through them because they are extremely small. Otherwise, such thin tubes, they would have not been able to move from one place to another. 
they have an average lifespan of 120 days that is they live for 120 days after which they die and they generally die in the spleen so where is the spleen so spleen is an organ which is located quite close by to the liver so here you can see this is the this structure is the spleen so this in this organ this organ acts as a blood filter that is it helps to filter the blood it tries to remove all the impurities or foreign substances from the blood and it also acts as a storage place for blood cells it helps to store the blood cells now since the RBCs die here, so you can also call it as the graveyard of RBCs because this is the place where the RBCs die. So this is about the structure and of uh, RBCs. So they, the most important function which red blood cells perform is that they help in transport because they are very small in size. So they can actually travel through very extremely thin tubes also and that means uh, they help to transport the uh, the substances from one point to another. Another function is that they contain hemoglobin and which has an affinity for oxygen. So hemoglobin helps in the transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide to and from different parts of the body. So transport is the main purpose of the red blood cells. Now the next category of or the next component of blood is the WBC that is the white blood cells. Now, WBCs are lesser in number when compared to the uh, red blood cells. As I said, their red blood cells were too much abundant. So here, if you look at their count, there are around 4,000 to 11,000 WBCs present per microliter of blood. If you compare it with uh, the red blood cells, they were present in millions. And now here it is in thousands. So there is a huge difference. So that means they are quite less in number when you compare them to RBCs. Now, you also got a proof about it when you looked at the blood sample after centrifugation. We saw that uh, red blood cells constituted almost 45% of the total blood volume, whereas the WBCs, which was present in the Buffy coat, it was not even 1%. So there, from there also, we could uh, guess that the number of WBCs would be very small when compared to the number of RBCs present in our body. These are nucleated colorless cells. So they have nucleus, so that's why they are nucleated cells. Uh, they are colorless, so they do not have any color because they do not have any pigment which can impart them a color. Like in case of RBCs, since they have hemoglobin, that is why they are red in color. But in white blood cells, they do not have any pigment to impart them any color and that is why they are colorless. Now, if you talk about the presence of WBC, they are not limited to blood alone. So it is not that they are present only in blood. They are also present in other parts of the body. For example, they can be found in liver. They can also be found in the lymph glands or in the spleen. So these are some of the other places where WBCs are found. They help fight infect help fight infection and builds the immune system of the body. So that is the main function of the WBC, that is the white blood cells. They help to fight against any sort of infection. So they are like the soldiers of our body. They protect our body from any kind of infection. For example, uh, sometimes you would have seen that maybe there is some bacterial infection in your body because of which you are getting some fever or something. Now, if your immune system is very strong, that means the body will try to protect itself on its own you don't really need to take medicines so but if your immune system is very weak in that case you will be more prone to fall sick and you will be required to take more medicines so these white blood cells actually help to build up your immune system by fighting against all type of infection now, how do they fight against the infection how do they remove the foreign particles they bind to the unknown or stranger protein structures on bacteria, virus or fungi and so that they can be removed. So they have this capacity or they have this potential to combine with the strange proteins present on the body of the other microorganisms. Now once they attach it to them and then they can remove them. Now there are many different varieties of white blood cells which exist as you can see in this picture. There are so many different shapes and sizes so they actually exist in a variety of shapes and sizes however they have been divided into few types we will quickly look at the different types of white blood cells 
they live for three to four days in human body. So their longevity is also very different when compared to the RBCs. Now RBCs had a, an average lifespan of almost 120 days and now these have only three to four days which is quite less. So that is why it is said that when the immune system of your body is spoiled, that means not enough WBCs are present in your body, so you are more prone to fall sick. Now let us quickly discuss the types of WBCs. There are broadly two types of white blood cells, granulocytes and agranulocytes. So let us see what is each of them. Granulocytes are those which have something like something related to granu granules. So they have some granular structures and that is why they are called granulocytes. They are further divided into three types, neutrophils, eosinophils and basophils. And agranulocytes are again further divided into two types that is lymphocytes and monocytes. So let us quickly discuss about each of these types of WBC. So we'll first start with neutrophils. Now neutrophils are the most abundant WBCs and they are phagocytic in nature. What is the meaning of phagocytic? That means they kill the foreign organisms which enter the body. So phagocytic means, just remember the phagocytosis, this term itself means to kill somebody. So it kills the foreign particles. So that is how they help in uh, protecting your body against infection. Eosinophils are less abundant when compared to the neutrophils. Now percentage wise if you look at their abundance, neutrophils constitute about 60 to 65 percent of the total white blood cells. So if there are total 100 white blood cells then out of that 65 are going to be neutrophils whereas eosinophils are very less abundant so if you look at the percentage of eosinophils it would be somewhere around 2 to 3 percent that means if there are total 100 WBCs only 2 or 3 of them are eosinophils now these eosinophils help to fight infections or allergic reactions so that is how they help you to protect against diseases Third one is basophils and they are again the least abundant WBC. So their percentage is even lesser than the eosinophils and they are involved in the inflammatory reactions. So if you look at the different types of WBC, you see all of them help to protect your body in some way or the other. Some of them kill microorganisms or foreign particles. Some of them help to protect you against infection and inflammatory reactions. Now let us look at the agranulocytes. So we'll talk about lymphocytes. So these are responsible for the immune responses of the body. That is how our body responds in needs of immunity. There exist two forms of lymphocytes that is B and T lymphocytes. Now these lymphocytes are the cells which are present in the lymph. So these type of WBCs are present in the lymph. Where exactly in the lymph? In the lymph nodes. We are going to talk about lymph also after we finish our discussion on blood. So there we will see the presence of lymphocytes. So these lymphocytes help to uh, purify the blood. That is they help to remove the impurities which might be present in the blood. So these are the two forms of lymphocytes. B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. Now we will not get into the detail of B and T lymphocytes. And the last type of white blood cell is monocytes. So these are again phagocytic in nature, that is they kill foreign particles directly. So in this picture, you can actually look at the different types of white blood cells. The first one is neutrophils, next is eosinophil, and then the third one is basophil, followed by lymphocyte and monocyte. So if you see the shape of all of them are quite different from each other. And that is why we say that the different types of white blood cells exist in a variety of shapes and sizes. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.